Bula Vinaka, Namaste, and warm Pacific greetings. This is a special vlog that we are recording, especially for our students to explain the reasons why uh, graduations have been cancelled uh, this September. It's with a heavy heart that uh, we have taken this decision. Uh, but we do want to explain the circumstances that surround this. As you all are aware, COVID-19 has really affected our ability to carry out our, our university functions normally. And I'm really pleased this morning to introduce um, our two other speakers. Uh, first of all, our acting Deputy Vice Chancellor Education, Professor Jito Vanualai Lai. Uh, morning, Jito. Uh, morning, Vici. Thank you for the invitation. And I'm also really pleased that we have with us today the president of the uh, USPSA Lothala campus. And um, it's Lapani. Lapani, good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, we will actually now hand over to Lapani, who will be, uh, who is representing our students in all our 14 campuses uh, to um, raise the concerns he has. And we hope to be able to uh, allay any fears that they are. And, and again, express our disappointment that we can't hold these graduations. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, first of all, we have received uh, numerous emails from uh, students uh, regarding to the cancellation of, uh, of this graduation. And uh, what they want is that if uh, the university can justify uh, on, uh, on uh, this because, uh, as we can see in the nation right now, uh, the sports event has already been started, like the Fair Brother and the, that is going on in the country right now. So if you can uh, please explain. So, so Lapani, I'll start and then I'll ask uh, Professor Gito to, uh, to add anything that uh, you know, I think will be appropriate. As I said, it's uh, with a very heavy heart that we had to take this decision but there are several really key crucial things that played into this. The first is of course that, you know, there are no international flights. So our graduations are always in uh, a regional affair. They are not just for our um, students in Fiji, but many of our students throughout the region who study with us are also at the graduations. So I think that's the first thing, and with uh, international or you know regional flights not possible, and you know the uh, safety of our students and our staff was the first and primary driving reason. Second, it's also very difficult that our chancellor, uh, the president of Nauru, uh, will not be able to travel and actually be able to confer the degrees. Now that is a, a very big concern for us because you know it is the president and the chancellor which the students really have the opportunity to engage with and to to receive their their degrees. Now you raise a question of um, you know that some sporting venues are allowing um, you know fifty percent um, of uh, of our you know capacity. Typically we graduate something like just over 3,000 students in a year. And, um, and for us, because we didn't have graduations in March, we would have to contend with that issue. Uh, and uh, at least everybody wants to bring at least two guests. And all that played on our mind of how do we accommodate that in, in this particular uh, difficult times. On top of that, the recent COVID-19, the latest case, also has us worried, although we know that the government has been taking uh, extremely important measures to make sure that there is no spread of COVID at the moment. We just have to be absolutely sure that our student staff and our guests who come to these events can be properly looked after. I think I want to also ask Professor Gito to add any of his comments to this. Uh, thank you, Vici. Uh, let me just uh, referring back to you know, some of the concerns that our students uh, mentioned that, and they compared to sporting events. Eh? Um, maybe it's a good reminder to, to all of us that uh, uh, we come under the jurisdiction mm -hmm. of the Fiji Higher Education Commission, FHEC. And they have explicitly written to us beginning of the semester 
that even though um, the face-to-face -face classes uh, uh, are allowed, it is important to avoid overcrowding. And uh, it is their directive that we are taking very, very seriously. And, and that's the first thing, yeah? So and that's uh, totally different from the sports right. event. And that's right, yes. Oh. And uh, that's why you can see um, that all our lecture yes. halls, for example, yeah. we have put into place the COVID-19 restrictions. Every other seat is crossed out. Yeah? Uh, and because of that, and also see that when you come through the gate, your temperature is taken. Yes. All of these are part and parcel of ensuring uh, that uh, we adhere to the COVID-19 restrictions. Uh, directive from the FHEC and so this is a, a part of that. If you could uh, provide us a brief update on the uh, cancellation of graduation thus far for semester one and the semester two. Yes, Lapani, so as I've said, you know, we were not able to hold our graduations as early as March. Again, you know, that was the time when we would have installed our new chancellor, uh, you know, the president of Nauru and he would have presided over, uh, over the graduations. And the same uh, for semester two, now we've had to take the same measures. Uh, and so, as I said, the impact is, I think, around 3,300 students have been affected from around the region. And then also, all our regional graduations, because nobody can travel, generally a team would travel from here to the regional countries. Uh, nobody can travel, so those graduations have also been affected. So it's not just our graduations in Fiji. And for that, we are truly uh, apologizing to everybody, and we really hope that our students can understand the rationale behind taking such a drastic decision. And uh, just to add to that, uh, you said, Mr. One, when we <coughs> decided to, to cancel the graduation, it turned out that that exact week, we had the first case of COVID-19, eh? and and so we were, you know, we were, uh, we have, we had a sigh of relief, knowing that uh, foremost, the uh, protection of our students, eh? the health of our students, mm -hmm. uh, was taken into account, and and similarly, this semester, as Vice Chancellor mentioned, for the September graduation, we are expecting up to 3,600 students. This includes the 2,300 students who did not graduate in, in March, eh? but they will be coming to the, we expect them to come to this graduation. And then if every student um, brings at least two, eh, their parents, mother uh, and dad, eh? uh, or their friends, then we are looking at about up to 10,800 people converging to one place. First of all, we don't have a, a place that size, that big. Mm. And secondly, it'll be very resource intensive eh, to have multiple um, ceremonies. So those are really constraining factors that we have. So we, we have right now. With that said, mm. can we like, because uh, 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 students are raising some concerns that can we do it in faculties? Like the yes. to be done in faculties? And so if you look at that number and if you divide by three, you're looking at 3,600 mm -hmm. per faculty. So, so but, even that is, is the constant. Yeah. But I'd, I'd like to clarify that, yeah. right? I mean, it's not that we are, um, you know, just doing this for the sake of doing it. Mm -hmm. the, the actual graduation ceremony is not up mm -hmm. to the faculties. It's, a, it's, a, it's something that the power rests with the council, mm -hmm. which is the chancellor and then the pro-chancellor and the officers of uh, the Senate who actually administer the and, and deliver the uh, and confer the degrees. So it would mean that, uh, you know, we would have, without the chancellor, first of all, we would, we would find it very difficult. And similarly, there would be an equity issue. We, you know, we can't just have a ceremony here, but not anywhere else. We would be, we would be saying to our region that, you know, uh, they're, they're two different things that apply and I know that our students are very always telling us how important it is to have that equality of service to all our people. Uh, as, as I said earlier, it's very difficult for us to, to make a decision like this, but uh, we really do have to look at, uh, at all the, 
the, the, the factors, but above all else, it's the safety and um, health of our students and our guests who would come to these events that, that really dictate that uh, you know, we have to do something different. So are there any other alternatives in place for students? Professor Gito. Yeah. The, the, the good news is that we will be providing uh, the photo opportunity. When the students come and pick their, their certificates, they will also be, uh, if they wish, they will be also be wearing the gown mm -hmm. and the trenches, and then we'll have uh, opportunities for pictures taken. Eh? So each faculty is doing that. Mm -hmm. So there will be a, a group of, uh, for example, students from FST. Uh, there will be a, a group of students from FST in, uh, converging to one place, mm -hmm. and the picture taken with perhaps with the vice chancellor and myself. So this will be done, definitely. As, as you know, this is a, something that I strongly believe in. Graduations are the pinnacle of uh, anybody's career. And so, of course, you know, we feel very uh, strongly that students should at least have that opportunity to have their photo taken. And uh, as Jita said, I always, at the end of every graduation ceremony since I've been here, always walk amongst the students, you know, encouraging them to, uh, you know, to have that photo op opportunity. And it's also a, a way for me to thank people's families, thank their friends, uh, you know, who've made so many sacrifices for them to be able to uh, to graduate. And uh, and as Gito said, we will both be on hand as much as we can to uh, to perform that that very role. Uh, we want to assure our students that uh, that you know, uh, just because there will not be a formal ceremony doesn't mean that we don't recognize. Uh, you know, the, the, this is the pinnacle of your career and this is the, you know, probably one of the most important days in, in one's lives to celebrate and, uh, and that we are quietly celebrating with you as well. Thank you, Shahid. I think that's uh, all from uh, my end, but uh, I would like to thank you too for the information and uh, for the justification. I know and I understand that the students will uh, uh, get a clear mind and a clear picture on uh, what you have been discussed. L Lapani, thank you very much. I mean, I think this is, uh, it's very important that we, uh, you know, we have these open channels of communication and it's just been a delight to have you here along with uh, Professor Gito this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, BC. Thank you, Lapani. Thank you.